It's a whole new year and a whole new look for the Pitt County Review. This month, we sit down with the Tax Administration Office to discuss the new tax assessments coming in the 2012 revaluation process. Also, we take a look at a very important part of parenting and what you need to know about breastfeeding and the nutrition of your infant child. All that and more on this exciting new episode of the Pitt County Review. and welcome to PCR. I'm your host, Kiara Jones, Director of Public Information and Media Relations for Pitt County. Here as always to keep you informed about the latest happenings in your community. As we mentioned in our last episode, we're very excited to bring you a brand new year of PCR, full of changes we hope you'll enjoy. 2012 will also bring changes to the Pitt County citizens as well, and that's why a little later, we have some important guests from the Pitt County Tax Administration Office to talk to you about how those changes will affect you. But before we do all of that, we send it over to the new PCR Information Room, where Helen Hamilton has the latest in county news. Helen? Thanks, Kiara. As you may remember from last month's PCR, the Pitt County Department of Social Services was working hard to provide a happy holiday for both children and adults in need. Well, with your help, their efforts were successful. On Monday, December 19th, the Adult Foster Care Program held its annual Christmas party for those who are in the care of the program. 26 out of the 128 people served by the program were able to attend. They were given gifts, refreshments, and general necessities that they usually would not have because they simply do not have anyone to help provide for them. Other clients are not able to attend the party, but they were still given gifts at their residence. As a reminder, the Adult Foster Christmas Project was designed to assist elderly and disabled residents of adult care homes or assisted living facilities with no family support or personal funds to purchase needed items throughout the year. Program coordinator Retta O'Quinn called this year's efforts a huge success. If it wasn't for the Adult Foster Christmas Project, um, there would be all these residents that would not have a single gift or single thing to open on, on Christmas around the holiday or no new items to get them from year to year. It took a while, but it came together on Friday afternoon with the conclusion of all the residents whose names that had been submitted by the facilities all being adopted and sponsored. Between the Adult Foster Care Program and the Christmas Cheer Program for Children, Pitt County DSS has assisted over 200 individuals this holiday season through the use of donations alone. Speaking of the Department of Social Services, there is still time to contact them if you are interested in learning more about the Low Income Energy Assistance Program, or LIEAP. The LIEAP program is administered by DSS and provides a one-time annual vendor payment to eligible families who need help with heating expenses. Checks are mailed directly to vendors on behalf of approved recipients with the state setting benefit amounts based on the type of fuel used. Citizens 60 years old and over, or those who are disabled and receiving services through the Council on Aging, can apply until January 31, 2012. Applicants who fall outside of that priority group have an application period from February 1st through March 31st of 2012. For more information on the LIEAP program and its changes, you can call DSS at 252-902-1110. And now, for a new feature from us here in the PCR Info Room. We are now starting the Board of Commissioners Monthly Update, where each month we will try to recap some of the important decisions made by the Board of Commissioners during the meetings of the previous month. On the December 5th meeting, the Board elected Beth Ward as the new Chair, with Jimmy Garris as Vice Chair. On the December 19th meeting, Commissioner Mark Owens was honored for serving as Chair in 2011, along with Commissioner Ward, who served as Vice Chair. As County Manager Scott Elliott told us earlier, the newly positioned board hardly has an easy year ahead of them in 2012. For 2012, Pitt County government will have several challenges ahead of it. One is um, implementing property revaluation, which is our, we're on the four year cycle for, so January 1, 2012 will be the effective year that we send out property notices. Number two, we'll be developing our operating, annual operating budget for the fiscal year 12-13 
And three, as part of that, we'll be trying to determine the appropriate service levels within that budget. Another item we're looking at is, is continuing to monitor our revenues and expenditures, especially within the constrained environment that we're continuing to operate within. To learn more about the board's meeting schedule or to view minutes from previous meetings, you can go to their page on our website at www.pittcountync.gov bcc. And finally, in our employee spotlight, we look at one DSS worker who won some great prizes while participating in a flu awareness campaign. The Pitt County Health Department and the NC Division of Public Health are excited to announce Mildred Daniels as the 2011 Tackle the Flu text message campaign winner. This fall, the NC Division of Public Health and Scholastic Sports Marketing created a flu awareness campaign aimed towards high school students and families. The campaign was hosted by 17 different high schools across North Carolina, where hand sanitizers were provided to help promote the importance of protecting yourself against the flu. As the winner, Mildred received a prize pack including four tickets to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill basketball game against Elon University on December 29th. More than 550 people across the state participated in the text message campaign, which prompted participants to visit flu.nc.gov to find flu vaccination clinics in their communities. So congratulations, Mildred. We hope you enjoyed your prizes. That's all for this edition of the news. Back to you, Kiara. Thanks, Helen. Once again, we're excited about the new year and the changes it holds for PCR, but we're also looking ahead to the changes that 2012 will bring for the Pitt County citizens. Stay tuned because when we come back, we'll have a very important conversation about the upcoming tax revaluation. Here in Pitt County, we understand that the health and well-being of the environment around us is our responsibility and we enjoy the benefits that a healthy environment adds to our quality of life. That is why Pitt County works hard to provide its citizens with the most comprehensive and convenient methods for solid waste disposal and recycling needs. So before the next time you simply throw something away, consider recycling and how the staff at the Pitt County Solid Waste and Recycling Department can help you. viruses spread mainly by droplets made when people with flu cough, sneeze, or talk. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby and make them sick. Hey, hey, hey Red, you awake? What is it now, Wendy? What is it now? I think I'm getting out of here, Red. I think I'm getting out today. Don't be a silly dog, Andy. No one leaves this place. Our only visitor is the guard who checks our cells every day. No, Red, I, I really believe it. Someone's coming to get me. And you too one day. I heard him talking. Someone really wants me. Let's hope so, Andy. Hey, somebody's coming. They said it would take a lifetime to get out of that shelter, but little Andy did it in just four hours. That's less time than it takes to run a football field. And all because some nice people wanted to adopt a dog. We get over 4,500 animals a year through the Pitt County Animal Shelter. Would you consider adding a family member to your family today? Please consider adoption. Welcome back. One of the biggest changes of the new year is to the county's tax values as a result of a process known as revaluation. Here to clear up some of the details are Kathy Booker and Harding Sugg of the Pitt County Tax Administration Office. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Kathy, we're going to start with you. Uh, revaluation is a subject that has come up a lot lately, so what exactly is it and why do we have it? Okay. Revaluation is the process by which all property tax values in a jurisdiction are revalued to their market value as of a specific effective day. It's sometimes called reappraisal or mass appraisal. The market value is the new assessed value for the property until the next revaluation. What this means is that we will revalue or appraise all real property, which is lands, buildings, improvements to the land, as of the, a specific date. 
The specific date, next date for Pitt County is January 1, 2012. And the state of North Carolina requires the counties to co conduct a revaluation at least once every eight years. Mm -hmm. However, the Pitt County Board of Commissioners has chosen a four-year revaluation cycle. And the purpose of the revaluation is to redistribute the tax burden based on the property value. As time goes by, some properties increase or decrease in, in value more rapidly than other properties. The, North Carolina sta the state of North Carolina delegates the task of valuing these properties to each county. Okay, so Harding, will all the property values change? Uh, most likely, yes, but not all values will change at the same percentage. Not each one will be the exact same. Uh, the purpose of the revaluation for us is to make sure we uh, assess the values that, that are reflected, the changes here in the local marketplace since the last general reappraisal. Okay, so you say that you're going to appraise at the market value. Why do you do that? Basically, North Carolina statutes tell us we have to do that. Um, there is a standard in effect that penalizes the counties if we don't appraise at, the, at market value. Uh, if Pitt County has fallen um, below the assessment level, then the, with the public service companies, the values are reduced to reflect those assessments. And so, so exactly how are those values determined, though? Public service companies are, are appraised by the state. Okay. So, Kathy, who exactly will do the revaluation? The um, Pitt County revaluation is conducted in-house, and what that means is you have um, appraisers, tax administration, real property appraisers who will be doing that process. And we feel like doing the revaluation in-house gives us a higher quality and better assessments for the tax dollars that are spent. Okay, so Harding, when will the revaluation take effect? Well, we started back in January of 2010 trying to process all this information and look at, look at the data that we have. Um, the effective date for our revaluation is January 1 of 2012. That's our CITUS day. We will send, uh, we'll send notices uh, sometime mid-February to the first part of March uh, to notify the owner of, of, of their new value. Okay, so Kathy, what kind of uh, changes can people expect um, from their new assessment? Well, you will have some properties that will go up and some that will go down and some that remain the same. Um, the value affects the share of your taxes, but the actual amount you pay is determined by the budget needs of the county and the city if you are in a municipality. The county and the municipalities will determine their budget needs. Um, and, and they will determine their, uh, the services that are required to meet these needs and therefore that is where they will generate the tax rate. Okay, so if I receive my new assessment and I disagree, what should I do about that? Well, the first um, step is you will have a notice that will tell you exactly what you need to do um, when you get your property value notice. Um, and you will follow those instructions. The first step is an informal appeal. Mm -hmm. And that is conducted by the uh, tax administration real estate appraisers. Um, and they will, once they get their property tax notice, they will have 30 days to appeal. And this is the informal step. Once we have, um, and they can request an, uh, an on-site visit as well. And once the appraiser has reviewed and uh, made any corrections, or if there are any corrections to be made, um, then if they're not happy, then they can schedule uh, an appointment with the Pitt County Board of Equalization and Review. And that board will not meet before the first Monday in April. Okay. Um, once the Pitt County uh, Board of Equalization and Review has heard their appeal, then if they are not satisfied, they can go to the Property Tax Commission in Raleigh. So Harding, what about your, your national real estate values? Have they affected the local uh, Pitt Greenville market? Well, yes they have, but one thing to remember is that real, real estate changes are, are local in nature. We always talk about real estate as location, location, location right. of each individual properties. Several counties in eastern North Carolina, mostly um, vacation home counties, the coast and the mountains, uh, in the last 10 years have experienced rapid acceleration of, of, of property values and they've taken a, a big drop in the last few years. Um, 
the, the, these, these eastern North Carolina itself in, in the midsection here, we have experienced uh, some decrease in values, but not as much as these, these coastal counties and these vacation counties. So Harding, you've worked with the tax assessor's office for a number of years. How many revaluations have you been a part of? Ooh, um, I think this was my fifth one. I've been here a while. Uh, it, it's, it's, it, revaluation is always a long, hard process that we try to uh, read the data in the market and apply it back to the 75,000 or so parcels that we have. It's never easy and, and properties don't always interact the same way uh, in the marketplace. Some neighborhoods uh, might increase or decrease in value more than other neighborhoods. Right, so this is a very important topic, obviously, to the Pitt County citizens. We're trying to get you guys on the interview circuit. You're doing my radio show. You're um, on another local um, television show this month. So um, do you get a lot of phone calls, Kathy, about revaluation, especially during this time when people are concerned about their tax values? Uh, many people will call and, and ask us for values, um, but we have to study these values, check our data before we can release those values out, and those values will not be available probably until mid-February. Uh, mid okay. We, we, we do get, we get a lot of calls right now, especially with the market the way it is on a downward trend, people wanting to um, bring in uh, new appraisals, 2011 appraisals on Mar on, on their properties, which we cannot use at this particular time, not until we're doing the 2012 value, but we can't use a, a 2011 appraisal on our 2008 revaluation okay. cycle. So we have to tell them that has to wait until the 2012 year. We can't revalue in between those cycles, right. not unless there's something physically incorrect with the property or maybe it burned or whatever of that nature. So this is such a large topic to cover in the only the few minutes that we have here today. So if someone wants to know more about the revaluation process, how can they find out more about it, Kathy? They are always welcome to call or come in to the tax administration office. Um, they can um, speak with either me or Harding or any of Harding's appraisers. Okay, and where is the tax office located, Harding? Uh, we're on 2nd Street, right behind the courthouse, corner of 2nd and Evans. Um, they can they can also look on the website. We have various data on the website. There is a, on the county website itself. There's the ten most asked questions that we have concerning revaluation, and I don't know that we have a notice out there, a, a example of a notice yet. But they'll be getting that soon enough, I think. Okay. So, uh, Kathy Harding, thank you so much for coming to the show today to uh, give us more information about this very important issue. And if you'd like more information about the Tax Administration Office in general, you can contact them at 252-902-3400 or visit their website at pittcountync.gov slash DEPTS slash taxacmin. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to answer some of your emails in just a moment. Get ready, Pitt County, and line up to be a part of the fun. It's time for the second annual Greenville Pitt County 8K Road Race. Originally set for August of 2011, the race was postponed due to Hurricane Irene, but has been rescheduled for Saturday, March 10th of this year. The race will be held at the ECU Student Recreational Center and starts at 8.30 a.m. There's activity for all skill levels with events including an individual and team 8K, one mile fun run, and kids race. The event will benefit the arts and sciences in Pitt County and is being brought to you by these fine sponsors. For more information or to register early, visit grpd.info or ecrr.us. Wake up and brighten your day with the most up-to-date information from Pitt County government, delivered right to your phone or personal media device. It's the Pitt County Twitter page, your personal source for news, videos, and pictures from all things related to Pitt County government. Follow us to stay informed about the latest Board of Commissioners meetings. Learn about upcoming events. You can even get a sneak preview of award-winning Pitt TV video. It's all here and waiting for you on the Pitt County Twitter page. Welcome back. Here at the Office of Public Information, it's our job to inform you of and connect you with the many services offered by your county government. 
Many of the questions we answer on a daily basis come in the form of emails, and we find that some of them are quite common. That's why we're going to answer some of them now in our regular segment we call Citizen Emails. Deborah L. writes, I live in Pitt County. Are there any regulations about parking cars in your front yard? I used to live within the city limits of Greenville, and I know it's illegal to park your car in your yard in the city limits. I have new neighbors renting their home next door, and they continually park their cars in the front yard when they have a perfectly good driveway. Well, Deborah, I forwarded your email to our county attorney, and this is her response. I hope this helps. To my knowledge, there is no prohibition to parking an operable car in the front yard in the unincorporated portions of the county. There is an ordinance to prohibit keeping junk motor vehicles, and there may be regulations for a particular subdivision or homeowners association, but I am not aware of any county ordinance to address this situation. Deborah asked, There is a very old, dilapidated shed in the backyard of this house that is being used for trash and junk storage. The metal shed appears to have no doors because it is always open. I am worried that wildlife and snakes are living in it among the junk. Could someone please check it out? Thank you. Well, Pitt County's planning director, James Rose, noted that the site is located within the city of Greenville's ETJ and that the city's code enforcement department will investigate the site. And lastly, Tamora writes, Is there a place to recycle VHS tapes in Pitt County? Well, I checked with our recycling coordinator, Paula Clark, and she said that there was no local place to recycle VHS tapes. And upon a Google search, we couldn't find any either. So maybe your search will be more fruitful. Do you have a question or comment? Then why not email us? Just go to our website at pittcountync.gov and click on the Contact Us link at the top of the page. While you're there, you can also find valuable information about government services offered, meeting schedules, and there's even a link to Pitt TV. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, did you miss some important programming from Pitt County government? That's okay, because everything you see on Pitt TV is also available anytime online at the Pitt County Peg Central website. The Peg Central site is Pitt County's own video player dedicated to keeping you plugged in to all the programming Pitt County has to offer. Simply log on to pitttv.pegcentral.com for access to all the latest county board meetings, informational programming, and public service announcements aired on Pitt TV. Never regret missing another program again. View it all with the Pitt TV Peg Central website. My name is Coleman Bailey. I am a science teacher at D.H. Conley High School. My name is Tim Peden. I am a deputy sheriff for the Pitt County Sheriff's Office. I have MS. And I have MS. Estás viendo Pit TV. Empoderar a usted. As you may recall from last month's PCR, our main topic was on health and nutrition throughout the holidays. But how do you ensure the health of those individuals who are too young to make their own food choices? Well, we're talking about infants, of course. And according to the CDC, breastfeeding is one of the most important measures a mother can take to protect the health of her infant. Sadly, though, only about 15% of children are breastfed exclusively six months after birth, and those rates are significantly lower for African-American infants. Well, to make sure that your entire family is off to a healthy start this year, PCR looked into the efforts being made to promote breastfeeding. It's filled with natural antibodies, and that's uh, almost like giving the baby their first booster shot. It's, it's going to protect the baby and get... Um, provide those natural uh, antibodies for the baby's digestive system and it helps to coat and line the digestive system with those good, good, good antibodies. It's the most natural source of nutrition for all infants and is widely regarded as the best option for mothers. Yet breastfeeding in modern society still comes with many myths and incorrect information linked to it. 
Those false perceptions are what breastfeeding peer counselors like Rita Myers and Donna Brooks of the Pitt County Health Department are out to change. There is a lot that we can offer these women. Namely, correct information on the health benefits for your child. The baby is much healthier, less ear infection, um, not prone to allergies or skin eczema, as well as um, they're just overall healthier babies, higher IQ. Um, usually when you tell moms those, those benefits, they're kind of, their curiosity is peaked. And if that's not enough to convince them, there's always the health benefits for the mother. And those include uh, returning to pre-pregnancy way a lot faster. There's less bleeding after delivery. Um, also, breastfeeding is going to reduce your risk of developing certain cancers, um, which is a really good benefit if you're prone to um, a family history of cancer. Or even the positive long-term effects. Even after babies 15, 16 years old, most breastfed babies tend to reduce their risk of developing diabetes as well as um, lower obesity rates. Meyer says that it's easy to cut through the misinformation that is out there, but someone just has to be willing to speak up. There's been some moms who may have decided that breast, they were not going to be able to breastfeed, but once they were given some extra support and education, they decided to go on to exclusively breastfeed. That support and education is what Donna Brooks and the rest of the breastfeeding peer counselors have turned into their personal mission. Through the Better Beginnings breastfeeding program, the health department staff utilizes a variety of methods to help new and expectant mothers become more informed and comfortable with breastfeeding as their preferred method of infant nutrition. We have question and answer session for them that they can actually ask us questions or ask other women that are in the group because there's been studies that's been shown that women learn from other women that are doing the same thing that they're doing, have been through that before. So the support is much needed there. In 2008, Brooks helped to start the Mothers of Milk support group, which meets every third Tuesday at the health department. She says regular attendance at the group's meetings can go as high as 50 people, and that it has even helped attendees develop their own social support network. I had wanted these women to make relationships outside of this group, to like go shopping together, or if you need a babysitter for the afternoon, call on somebody that's in this group, and to make those friendships. And they pretty much have come full circle, and so it does make me feel good to know that Pitt County has that um, support for women that choose to breastfeed, that they may not get it within their family, or um, somewhere else in the community, somebody may not be as supportive, but they know here we are. And it's that support network that keeps both the program and its progress going forward. Brooks and Myers encourage any citizens interested in learning about the programs to call 252-902-2382 or visit the health department's website. For even more information on the benefits of breastfeeding, you can visit the breastfeeding information page on the CDC's website at cdc.gov breastfeeding. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I get my flu shot to protect myself and my son. It is said that a good picture is worth a thousand words, and at the Pitt County Flickr page, you can find a wealth of information from the images we upload every week. See the latest snapshots of life in Pitt County government. Log on to our Flickr page today. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of PCR, as we hope 2012 brings many positive moments for you and your loved ones. Thanks to Kathy Booker and Harding Sugg from the Tax Administration Office for talking to us about revaluation today. As mentioned earlier, keep watching PCR as we bring to you many exciting and wonderful changes. Until then, don't forget to check us out on your favorite social media sites such as YouTube, Twitter, and Flickr. Just do a search for Pitt County Government. From all of us here at PCR and the Office of Public Information, Happy New Year and thanks for watching. <laughs>